In this tutorial, we're going to learn all about the debugger, Bubble's tool for making testing and debugging easy. We access the debugger every time we click Preview, and it will load at the bottom of our app. There are three essential things that make up the debugger. Workflow controls, which allows for changing the workflow speeds. The element inspector, which shows how each element is displaying on the page. And the warning sign, which will notify you with any run mode errors, capacity alerts, or if you're in safe mode. These tools will become invaluable the more your application grows, and in this video we're going to look at how each work. By the end, you'll have a full understanding of how you can use the debugger to test and debug. Here's the beginning of a recipe sharing application that we are developing. We have an input box, a button, and a repeating group. The idea with this app is that when a user submits the recipe into this input box, it will appear in this list for other users to see. We ran this workflow at a normal speed, which is exactly how your users would run it. When we add a recipe, the entry shows in a repeating group as intended, which is great. The workflow ran and our application works. But if we wanted to test the workflow, we can switch the speed. First, we'll change the speed to slow and add another entry. This will run each action in the workflow with the one second pause in between. The slower speed is great for observing these actions at a glance. And while we can see what is happening on each step, we don't have time to react. This is where the step-by-step -step speed comes in. With step-by-step -step selected, watch as we run the workflow to create a new recipe. The debugger is aware of the event that we triggered. Now we manually control each step in the workflow. Each action is paused until we tell it to resume, giving us time to react and observe how it works. When we pause on an action, we can view the action's properties. In this case, we're creating a new recipe into the database with the name set from the input field on the page. Whenever we see blue text in the debugger, we're getting a result. In this case, the name of the recipe we submitted. We can click on this result and see how Bubble evaluates the expression. When we have something to evaluate, we see it in the evaluator. In this example, we see how the name for this recipe is returned. If we click on the first part of the expression, we see that it comes from input recipe name, which we can hover over and find it in red on the page. Then we double check that the values match with what we typed in, and we're good to go. We'll continue to run next until we complete the workflow. Step-by-step -step is a crucial workflow control for when you need a magnified look at how your workflow is running. However, the more actions you add to your workflow, the more cumbersome it can be to test and debug in step-by-step. -step. Instead of always relying on step-by-step -step mode, we can add a breakpoint to individual actions. As the name suggests, when the workflow hits this action, it will immediately break or pause so you can check its properties and evaluation. When you run the workflow as normal, the debugger will go through each action to see if it needs to break. When it gets to the step with a breakpoint, it behaves just like step by step, so we can check how this action is running. Next, we'll look at the element inspector, and the best way to do this is with an example app. Here's the finished index page for our recipe application, which you can build for yourself in our crash course, Build Your First Bubble App. With this page complete, we'll look at the element inspector. When you click Inspect, the debugger opens and you can view any elements on the page to find out how it is being displayed. You'll know you're inspecting the page when you hover over any element as it will now turn red. If we click on a red element, we're inspecting its properties as it is on the page. This is like viewing the element in the property editor, except now you can see these elements with their properties in real time. From properties like the font style the element is using to its X and Y positions on the page, every single property that we can control in the editor is displayed here in the debugger. This text element is getting its text information from what we set in the editor. This is different from inspecting an element that gets its text dynamically. Let's inspect the text element in our repeating group to see the difference. Off the bat, we can see the similarities in the general properties since they are both text elements, but the contents of the text itself is blue, which indicates to us that this text is from dynamic data. This distinction is important, as with dynamic data in the properties, we can click it to learn more about it. When we do, the results show in the next panel, the evaluator. In the evaluator, we get back the dynamic data that we fed into this element, and we can click through each part to see how the expression has evaluated to this result, just like we did with workflow controls. This is core to our testing and debugging process, as much of your application will use dynamic data. Remember, Bubble evaluates expressions from left to right, so when we click on the parent group's recipe, we can load that recipe and double check it. The second part of our expression, and the end result, specifically returns our recipe's name, 
so what we see here is the result that's displayed in this element. With inspect still on, rather than inspecting every element on the page, if you know the name of the element you're looking for, you can search for it or find it in the dropdown. A common thing you'll find yourself debugging is whether something is visible on the page. With the inspect dropdown, you can find any element that is hidden by default to make this easier. We'll search the page for our repeating group and click it to load it in the inspector. Before it shows any properties, we have the list that the repeating group is displaying. And as we scroll down, we can see all the entries in the list that are on the page. The property we'll inspect in our repeating group is our data source, which since it's blue, we can click to see how it evaluates. In the evaluator, we see the default data source returns every recipe that is submitted. In our app, we don't always want users to see every single recipe. And instead, we want to give them the option to pick what they see, like most popular, most recent, etc. To do this, we have conditionals on the repeating group connected to the value of the dropdown on the page. When true, this will change the data source in the repeating group. Currently though, all of our conditionals in the debugger are red, which means they are not evaluating as true, so the default data source is what the repeating group is using. If these conditionals were true, they would be green. So we'll change the dropdown on the page and reinspect the repeating group to notice that the change has made one conditional true. The more conditionals you have, the more important it is to check them in the debugger to make sure it's correct. When the conditional is true, the properties the conditional effects will take on a new result. Since this condition is now true, our data source will change. Underneath this conditional, we can see how the data source changes, and when we click to evaluate it, we can see how it's different from our original data source. By the way, we can also tell if privacy rules are affecting any property on an element as the debugger will notify us like so. This is something we'll dive into in another video, but it's good to keep in mind as you test and debug to make sure privacy rules aren't in your way. We'll turn off inspect mode for now, and underneath it, we'll click show responsive boxes. If you are making your application responsive, this is how you would debug it in preview mode. When we click show responsive boxes, every element on our page gets a red border added to it. Then when we resize the page, we can see how each element and group collapse. Additionally, when you click on any element on the page with this turned on, a pop-up will give you more information about how that element will respond on the page. Finally, let's say we hit an error that we didn't catch. While we have the issue checker, the warning sign will catch anything in run mode. When it does, the warning sign will alert you and change colors depending on what it flags. You can click on the issue to see what's wrong. If you hit an error here, it's not always the case that something is actually broken. That's where the debugger comes in handy, as it's here to help you figure out what is happening. In this case, the issue occurred in the second create step, because we didn't properly fill out the action. Once we do, the error will be resolved. The debugger will catch all these errors and point you towards what is causing trouble. So as you develop your app, use the debugger, run workflows at different speeds, inspect your elements on the page, and investigate any warnings. With all of these things, you'll be able to solve your own problems effectively. That's it for this tutorial. For more, be sure to check out bubble.io slash academy.